Welcome back, everybody. Here we are with another episode of this week's Hard Hat Highlights, where Jay and I go over some of the things that happened to us during our work week. And then, of course, we're constantly scouring the internet for new content to repackage for our social media. So we talk about some of the top business headlines or just headlines that stood out to us. And, of course, we want to add our little funny flair for a little bit of levity for your day. By the way, this show is broadcasted on our YouTube channel called Glass Guy. And if you haven't subscribed yet, we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel, share, comment, like, Maybe even stop by our North Naples office and join us as a guest appearance on our weekly hard hat highlights wrap up. Jason, how the hell are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good. Good. We had a good workout this morning. We did. We did. I'm starting to you, get used to those abs. You're, you're starting to be able to keep up. So that's good. <sighs> Man, I can't <laughs> wait. That goal. I hope I make it. They say abs are made in the kitchen. I can see that. Cutting out sweets has been one of the most difficult things that I've ever done in my life. Yeah, that's not easy. So, anything that stood out to you this week that you'd like to talk about? This week was an amazing week mm. um, in terms of some some great recognition for the, the company and uh, individuals within the company. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, this week, we were... Our, our sister company, My Shower Door, as well as our glass manufacturer, D3 Glass... Mm -hmm. Both were announced that they both made the Inc. 5000 list. So the Inc. 5000 for you, those of you that don't know, is put out by Inc. Magazine and is the 5,000 fastest growing privately held companies in the United States. And they put that out every year. And so D3, our manufacturing arm, just made it for the second straight year. And my shower door just made it for the eighth year out of the past 10, and I believe ninth out of the last 11, if I'm not mistaken. That's that's unbelievable. That has to go into the dynasty category. I believe that's the first time a uh, Florida company has done that. So my shower door is a, is a first of all the small businesses in the state of Florida. If I'm not mistaken, that is correct. How many total bi small businesses are there oh, in the United States? Um, it's somewhere between... Three million and a fuck ton. Three million and a fuck ton? Yeah. I thought I have no idea. I thought it was somewhere around thirty three million that I saw. Let's ask Surrey if she it can could look be. that up. It could be. Surrey, how many small businesses are there in the entire United States? Let's see. We talk about this AI. Three million small businesses in the US account for sixty four percent of newly created jobs. Those created minus those lost. Thirty million. Okay. So, so out of 30 million small businesses in this country, Inc. 5000 has labeled My Shower Door and D3 Glass. Yeah, let's preface that by saying they're privately held businesses. Privately held businesses. But yes, as most small businesses are. Correct. Um, so that, that was a... That's a huge recognition. And kudos to every single teammate of ours at My Shower Door and D3 um, because if you didn't know, it's it's a huge honor to even be selected into that category and placed into it. But to get into it a second time, you have to have a certain amount of growth. And it's not single-digit growth. There's all no. these matrix. How many jobs did you add? How much you know money to the uh, revenue have you added? There's a bunch of other matrix that have to be checked for you to even be uh, apply for that nomination. And there's been some major businesses that have made that before. I believe Amazon made it. Oh yeah, point. Apple. And, yep. Yeah, all of them. Yeah, so it's it's a great honor, and uh, it's a huge honor, and it's a testament to the culture and everything that the brand at My Shower and D3 uh, stand for. Yeah, and and huge thank you to the entire team. Yep. Yep. And thank oh. you to Inc. Five Thousand for putting that all together. I know they usually have a big gala every year. Yeah. Yeah. I got to go one year. It was. It was good. A lot of good guest speakers, uh, That's cool. business people. It, it's a good thing to attend. Yeah. Uh, further, there was some personal recognition. It was actually oh. you. Oh, yeah. do tell. I oh, forgot. you don't know? Yeah. Oh, you so, didn't know? So my cohort here, Keith, mm -hmm. was selected by U.S. Glass Magazine as one of the top 24 most influential people in the glass industry. That's so cool. So 
you got to finally be on the cover of the magazine. Um, you know, albeit it's, a small. Yeah. It, nevertheless, it was on the cover, and I've been manifesting that for probably two years. And those that are really close to me know that. And 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 the reason for that is. When I first got started in the glass business, and you'll know this, we were introduced to kind of a mentor of our our family, our father, our business, Tom Whitaker. Yes. And back at that time when we met him in, you know, in the late 80s, early 90s, he was so far ahead of the curve as far as supplying a high-end product on what on the face would look like kind of a not-so-sexy product, shower doors. Like, you're out and about. How many times do the word shower doors come up in your conversations outside of work? It's not a, a common thing. No, I remember when I first started here, people are like, you do what? Yeah, yeah, you like, can make a living doing that? Yeah. Well, he was doing very well for himself long, many, many, many years ago. And what I always had so much respect for him was his innovation and ability to create a, a high-end experience Again, for a product that normally you wouldn't think would garner that type of attention. And to me, that's his legacy. That's what he's When I think of him, I think of something high-end right. and, and good quality. And I said, God, if I could be in this industry long enough, I would want to leave a stamp somehow, some way. And you and I have been installing side-by-side -side for 25 years now. But in the last seven, we've adopted this social media. And I think that's what's allowed us to garner enough attention to showcase what we do and, and and put eyeballs on our industry as a whole and be champions for our industry. And I think that's the reason why, you know, I was able to um, be selected um, as one of those um, influential people, which I think is really cool. I didn't know how I was going to leave a stamp in the industry, but I, I'm i grateful that I believe it's because of the social media because I have so much fucking fun doing it. I mean, right. like, I look forward to doing this. Yeah. So... And speaking of influence in the glass industry, uh, we got to big give a big shout out to our friends are over at FHC. Yes, uh, Don yeah. Fries and company. Yeah. They just surpassed one million dollars in charitable donations to the National Glass Association to help build the glazing industry. Yeah, and and for your thinking, well, what do you mean they just give a million dollars? A lot of those funds are going to. Um, services to help onboard people that have never been in the glass industry before. So for a lot of us glass companies, if you were to teach someone our industry that's never been in the industry, all they know is they, they've touched a piece of glass and they've cleaned a piece of glass, but they don't know anything about it. Yeah, it's education. Uh, it's education. And there is a lot of education, but that costs time, money, and resources to put together. And so I believe a majority of that money, if not all of it, has gone towards making that happen. So they are true champions of the industry too. So kudos to uh, yes. FHC. That and that's not just a small amount. I mean, that's a milli. Yeah, that is just a to give away million <laughs> balloons. Yep. Um, huge shout the out to FHC. That's cool. That's a big flex right there. All right, Absolutely. let's get into some of the headlines. Which one do you so, want to get into first? So I actually came across this video <laughs> earlier this week, and I'm going to preface this by saying I don't know if it's real. It what do you seems mean? like it may even be a little bit of an AI video. However— Wait, why do you say that? It just—when you see who's in it and the way this person talks, <laughs> uh, the person in this video is probably one of the smartest people in the world. Sure. Uh, that would be Mr. Elon, Elon Musk. It's got to be him. And he's not the he's best not speaker. He's not a great speaker. No, no but that, I understand that. I wouldn't. I don't knock him for that because he's too smart. Anybody that's that gifted in one side is lagging something over here right. because it's inconsequential for him to achieve what he's doing over here. All right, let's so, uh, play the video. So, we so can see yeah. The video. Anyhow, I I saw this video and it really got me thinking. Again, whether it's AI generated or not, the premise behind it. Makes a lot of sense. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see. And so let, let's see what we're what we're looking at here. Did you see the theory going around AirPods could actually be one of the most dangerous devices to use? How are AirPods dangerous? So a patent came out last year for the next generation of AirPods coming out, and it said that the new AirPods would be able to track brain waves, brain activity, and biosignals. So it'll be able to track all these things just by sticking the earbud in your ear. Really? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it'll be able to track your brain. Thinking 
or something, but then a few minutes later on your phone, an ad pops up for that thing you were thinking about? Yeah, I guess that has happened to me. So people are saying this is a technology connection. Okay, first I want to say... Yeah, so it's data collecting. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 I believe that this, if it's not happening, could happen. I, I see that happening. Well, what really caught me, my attention with this is because of the premise behind it. It makes complete sense. But I was at Home Depot, I don't know, it was probably two months ago, by myself. So I, I didn't talk about anything. It, it was nothing that I didn't have an agenda for this particular product. I happened to walk down an aisle and this product caught my eye and I stopped and I looked at it for a minute. And okay, I just walked on and got what I was there for. Later on that evening, I'm sitting down in front of the TV and, you know, seeing what's going on. And here's an ad for one. And here's an ad for another. My feed was getting pummeled by ads for this particular product that I never said anything about, never looked up. Oh, yeah, because if you were talking about it while you're going the aisle, your your microphone on your phone could pick it up. Well, yeah, that's, but you that's weren't the talking about we've it. always had. No. no. No, no, that's a thing. Okay. So I didn't say a word about it. It, it was my eyes. That was it. Now, so maybe there's it would some have sort to be of the wildest. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say around your phone and where that product is placed in there. Yeah. I... I wouldn't be surprised about that either. It it's Were you wearing earbuds? <laughs> I was not. Oh. I was not. No. So it's gotta be a geofence then. It it has to be a geofence, but it also between that and this this AirPod thing, it, it kind of They might have the question. A AI cameras in there too, by the way. AI cameras? In in Home Depot. Like the cameras might know where you are in every aisle mm -hmm. and who you are by the facial recognition and what you're looking at. And if you stop and look at something for over a certain period of time, they might push it through to the algorithm within your phone for like direct marketing. I mean, that makes sense. The The question becomes, when does it become too intrusive and too... Dude, it's already there. I like, mean, it, what the fuck? Like, what do you mean too intrusive? Like, how is it not intrusive? Did you see that Uber... Did you watch that yet? That Uber special? You have to you have to watch it. I'm too busy looking at ads of stuff that they're I saw. They're all in your phone, all of them, for their own reasons. But they're in their phone, and it's buried in that agree. Have you ever read one of those agreements that you agree to when you get a new app? You, of course not. You run to the bottom, you hit click, and you go. Yeah. They're in the phone. Um, but that's interesting. Must I, be why you get so many porn ads. No, I don't get any of that. <laughs> but I would tell you this. I think you're not wrong on the AI generated. Watching him talk like that, he's very methodical when he speaks. One thing that he's really good at, it's a it's a hard skill to do, is how much time he takes in between when he speaks. If he's thinking, he'll think it through first before he says it, and that dead air can create anxiety for some people. Like, it does, yeah, and he gets... I normally don't talk like that. I'm go, 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 go. He wasn't taking any stops in there. And so to me, I think you're right. I think that would be an AI. Yeah, usually he's kind of ahead of him. His, his brain is ahead of his mouth, so he does a yes. lot of ums and ahs. And, like, uh, yeah. Filler words. But anyhow, that, I thought that was a, an interesting thing. And you had brought up those facial recognition cameras. Interestingly enough, uh, this next story comes out of Tampa. The, at the Tampa International Airport, uh, they're implementing facial recognition, much much like I saw the NFL is actually do, even doing it in the stadiums. I'm not sure what the purpose of the NFL is to identify people for whatever. I'm not sure what it is. However, in Tampa and in, in many airports now, when you give your license, when you when you go through security, they'll scan your license and they'll take your picture. And then they'll match your, your picture. Somehow it scans your face to determine if that matches, if it's the same person in the license. Um, I actually had a little hiccup with that because my wife, for some reason, when, last time we came through Boston, uh, put my birth date in, incorrectly. Put It was a year off, so I had to go all the way back to the counter. That's, that's a whole other story. But anyhow, 
this woman was going through Tampa International Airport and she got stopped because it flagged her and said, you know, this this isn't you. And it turned out that she was using somebody else's license allegedly because her license had expired. So she used a friend's license and that friend actually happened to be in prison. And <laughs> to top it off, this woman had a warrant herself in Pennsylvania. So there's well, there's a couple. Well, weird first of all, the here. technology worked. The technology absolutely worked. You know, um, you got to have some massive balls to like since nine eleven. Yeah, like, you don't mess with the. And I see these people getting arguments and yelling. Like when I go on an airplane nowadays. I don't check a bag. I bring enough shit that I can carry in a backpack. I I wear comfortable shoes, no belt. Take my shoes off quick. I don't say two words. I get my Aunt Annie's pretzel, maybe a coffee. And I get on the plane as quick as I can and sit down. And I, that's it. I'm on my phone. But you see all these other people. I mean, go. you see some really interesting characters nowadays oh, going yeah. to the airport. I mean, with their dogs and... You know, some of these people dress, it looks like they just crawled out of bed. I can't stand the people. Pet peeve. My pet peeve is if you're on a fucking airplane and you take your shoes and your socks off and you got your, like, you're just your feet and you're putting your feet up like this. Dude. I was on a plane once where somebody was clipping their fucking nails. I Come on. If I had the ability to throw this person off the airplane, I would have done it. <laughs> that That should be an arrestable offense. Happened to me at a Publix once, too. Someone's clipping their fingernails in line. I'm thinking, you're the most gross human being on this planet if that's what you're doing in public. Well, likewise, we had a similar situation a couple of months ago, flying <laughs> home, and guy behind us, we just get in the air, and he opens up this sandwich, and it was, like, fucking stacked with onions. <laughs> and it just... It stuck up the, the entire plane. plane. It was awful. I mean, it was like... Situational awareness. It was not, almost like they were raw, like your eyes were watering. Do you think it's because so many people are, including myself, addicted to the phone that you almost lose sight of situational awareness out in public, like how you're supposed to act around people? I would not disagree with that whatsoever because there's a lot of that nowadays. Like just so out of touch that they don't even realize they're doing it. Yeah. Like I got a couple of minutes here. I can knock this out. Yep. Doesn't matter who's around. You're clipping your fucking nails on an airplane. <laughs> you should be blackballed from flying forever. Ever. Guantanamo. Oh, Get them there. <laughs> A little further down. Lost I-4. Uh oh. I-4. They die call it die for. Yeah. It's a fucking traffic. So uh, here in Florida, we had a little lawsuit with. Oh, I saw that. Arguably. One of the largest corporations in the world. Yeah. The Walt Disney Company. Yeah, break that down. This is going to so, clip good. A gentleman and his wife went out to eat uh, in Disney Springs at a restaurant called Raglan Road. Uh, I've been there many times. It's a great place, a little, little Irish place. And a uh, gentleman asked, or, or wife, whomever asked the waiter to ensure that there was no nuts and something else within the food that she had ordered. And so he, he went to the kitchen. Because of an allergy. Because of an allergy. So he went to the kitchen, came back. She said, no, absolutely. That's, there's nothing there. It's not a problem whatsoever. So a couple ate their food, left, and a couple hours later, the woman who, by the way, was a doctor, uh, went into anaphylactic shock and died. No. Yeah, because apparently there were nuts in this food. And subsequently, the gentleman has filed a lawsuit against Disney Company, which it's it's a weird number for a wrongful death. He's asking for fifty thousand. That just, I mean, that's like a what? shitty life insurance policy. It it didn't make sense to me. But outside of that, Disney said, "Well, yeah, it's great, but guess what? You can't sue us." Why? What do you mean? Can't sue us? Well. Seven years ago, you signed up for a trial of Disney Plus, our streaming service. And within the fine print, it said that any, any issues you had had to go to arbitration prior to going to court. And you agreed to that. 
Therefore, you need to go to arbitration before, before filing suit. And furthermore, when you purchased your tickets online to Epcot, you also signed a similar agreement. So here, this woman's dead, and Disney saying, "Well, because of a you can fucking streaming it. app." Which, I mean, I gotta imagine the court can delineate the difference between absolutely. Some, like, there's a possibility there's people that have that streaming service that have never been to fucking Disney. Like, it's two separate entities. It goes back to just what you were talking about when we when we scroll through and agree to all these terms on our phones. It's the same damn thing. No, Nobody reads those. And you, I understand. That doesn't mean you can just bury anything in there. Agreed. Agreed. And it's just a bad look. A bad look for a company that's supposed to be very family friendly. And something seems off about this too. I mean, 50,000. 50, there's a lot of weird things going on here. So I was prepared to talk about this for a couple of days and then all of a sudden, I saw yesterday that Disney has now backed off from this and said, "Okay, we can we can go to court," which is weird. They didn't offer anything, and you know what if, is arbitration? Disney, is that like mediation almost? Yeah. So we're gonna go and sit down and see if we can work this out before we have a court do it. Yeah. Now here's the thing: if I'm Disney and I'm making billions of dollars a year, mm. and shit, I probably made fifty grand off of two families coming in here i would have said you know what here here's 50 grand if that's all they're asking for it. you you were responsible your company was responsible for killing somebody yeah and and their family asked for 50,000 whether you're right or wrong at that if somebody died and 50,000 was on the table I mean, if you're a really greedy pig business, you should have just said absolutely goodbye and wrote the check and be done with it. Yeah. Um, it's just strange. Yeah. There's there's a lot of weird stuff with that. Maybe. Like, and and maybe, maybe Disney knows something and said, this wasn't us. Maybe the husband threw a little, oh, <laughs> a little well, something in there. I don't know. Well, I mean, you it's know, just weird. To play devil's advocate with this, though, on Disney's side, and I, by the way, I am not sticking up for Disney. Right. I, I am. I've been there enough to know that I have zero interest in ever going back there again. They've taken 50000 from you. Oh, my God. They've taken 50,000 <laughs> hours, too, that, you know, going there and watching your kids when they're young is fine, but I just... Yeah. You're not a Disney adult. No, and I don't understand. <laughs> I don't even want to go down that rabbit hole because I'm sure there's a lot of people I talk to do, but I don't get that. It's weird to me. Yeah. I'd rather go go climb Yosemite Park or something like that. Montana's pretty cool. Um, it, it is. But the, the, to just play devil's advocate, if they did go to court and it was a big dollar amount, mm -hmm. they have to be cautious of setting precedent because if it was that easy for something like that to happen there's a lot of sick people out there and they're like well geez if we go somewhere where someone we know has got an allergy and we just crush up some peanuts and put it in their to shake we can get 20 million out of this maybe we should consider it. like i would never do that but you could see i've seen enough stuff on that people do a lot worse for a lot for less sure so that is a touchy subject there. It really is. And there's, you're talking about setting precedent. Like, is there a precedent? Maybe maybe we need to ask someone this. Is there a precedent for the amount of money you What about our friend Cardinal Law? Cardinal yeah. Law. Eric. This is this would I, be personal injury, no? Uh, Ish? It could be. I actually Negligence? thought about reaching out to Eric about this because it's an interesting question. But is there a precedent set with the, that dollar amount? Now, is it someone's life is only worth 50000 there's got to be case law on something like that already done by now. Yeah. And the funny thing is when you go somewhere and you talk about allergies, for the most part, waiters and waitresses come and they're just kind of in this routine. Drinks, you know, the soft skills and customer service have dwindled over the years. But when you do say allergy, they usually stand up a little bit taller like, oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, shit. You know, they circle it across that. it. Yeah. They double check with the chef. And so that was a total breakdown of communication. And that's where communication is massively, massively important. Even my kids, and your kids, I'm sure, too. You, 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 if a kid is in, in the classroom, has a peanut allergy, you get all sorts of emails home. Like, like, don't even send it to school. You know, it's funny you say that. One of my daughter's first friends that have had 
end up having a sleepover when she was younger. We were good friends with their parents as well. And I, I, I can remember like it was yesterday. The night we were all hanging out. It was a Friday night at their house. And, of course, the girls kind of court you in a corner after being good. Like, oh, you know, can we have a sleepover? And, of course, yeah. you're like, yes. And so she gives us a bag and she goes, okay, and here's this thing you have to stab her with. I'm like, whoa, whoa. And she goes, it probably won't happen. And she's old enough to know if she does something. She knows how to look out for it. That wasn't good enough for me because now <laughs> I didn't sign up for that. That responsibility, I'm thinking she's having a sleepover. They can go play in their room and I get to watch TV and not have to entertain or be bothered. This no. is great. You gotta no. be nurse ratchet. <laughs> I was on pins and needles the whole time, you know, <laughs> locking down the pantry. I did not want that. Res that's a heavy responsibility. Yeah. So for a waiter and chef not to take that serious, somebody has to be responsible for that. Should they fair to be fair? Should they dive into the details and find that it is negligence, mm -hmm. somebody should be responsible um, heavily. Agreed. Heavily. Agreed. Um, well, let, for, wait, one more thing. Yeah. If I told you that two people had that same exact experience at the same day, at the same time, but one was a little local restaurant where there was only five or six employees and one was Disney, but the same outcome happened, Mm -hmm. Should the same amount be paid out on both? Because it's funny because I feel like most people are going to feel like they expect more from Disney than they would from the local company. Not that that would even come into mind, but I feel like it's ingrained subconsciously. You're right. But what you're doing here is you're putting a value on a human life. <laughs> that person already did when they said 50000 So oh. I, I, I don't like talking about because the optics of it. However, it needs to be discussed. Agreed. Agreed. So are you expecting more money from the big dog? <laughs> what are you trying to say? I don't know. Anyhow, <laughs> we talked about something here a while ago. A uh, certain older member of my family, I don't want uh, to shame anyone, but a certain older member of my family enjoys a particular website uh, where you can purchase things at a heavy, heavy discount. Uh, that website would be as I always called it Timu, but apparently it's Temu. Temu. Okay. Shamu. Um, the Florida Attorney General has joined 20 other states in demanding answers from Temu as to their ties to the Chinese Communist Party. And why they're asking that is it, it's long been believed that places like this that are selling goods for, for so cheap they're really not caring about the profit of it. What they're caring about is the information they're stealing. And oddly enough, this particular family member has been hacked several times in her bank account. So I'm sure there's probably a correlation there, but there's 20 attorney generals trying to figure out what's going on. Um, Have you ever had your bank account hacked? Um, I haven't. When I when I say yes and no, I haven't personally. Um, but my, you're close enough to someone to understand the fucking nightmare it oh, is. Oh, dude, yeah. So Jess had, uh, I don't know, five six years ago. We were it was a Saturday morning. We're laying in bed, and she gets an alert on her phone that her shipped order, her ship shopper is shipping. Shopping, Jesus Christ, her shipped shopper is shopping. And she's like, I didn't order a shipped. And it was somewhere in the Bronx, New York. And the person spent like $380 at CVS. And somehow got connected to our, through her shipped account, got it pulled out of our bank account. So we had to go through the whole thing, get new cards. And oh, my God. It, it was a nightmare. And getting on the phone with those people. And, you know, it's, it's a necessary evil. You have to do it. But what a nightmare. Yeah. People that are caught for stealing people's identity or uh, digital fraud or theft. Again, that that crime should be punishable as high as you can do it. Well, there's there's not just Temu with this. Um, there's another thing, and I'm, I know your daughter and my daughter, They, from time to time, they want to buy clothing um, from Sheen. Never heard S -H -E -I -N. of it. S-H-E-I-N. It's, it's another Asian company. Um, and, you know, low-cost... Clothing. Knock off shit. Yeah, yeah, basically. 
But this this has also been said about Temu as well. But apparently, because there's no regulations over there in China where they're making these these clothes, they've found chemicals in carcinogens in in the clothing. So literally, you, you wear shirt and you know. You're breaking like, out with a like you're smoking a pack of cigarettes for oh wearing my a shirt. God, they um they found with Sheen in particular, they found a pair of shoes that had 229 times the legal amount of a certain chemical in it. Then they found these sandals that had 11 times the Jesus. legal amount. But there's no there's no regulations, so. We're blindly kind of walking into people stealing information and, you know, poisoning. At the cost of buying cheap shit that you just don't need in the first place. Well, absolutely. But tell that to a teenager with no money. Yeah. You I, know? you know what? I had often heard that example and, you know, you hear everybody say it's so cliche. You know, there's nothing in a mall that you'll give a shit about in the next 10 years, blah, 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 blah. But when it really came hit home to me is during the hurricane when we had all the water in our house and it just wiped out everything in the garage. And at first I'm like, oh, my God, you know, all my stuff. It was the most even lost my muscle car boat. And I'm sad about those things. But what a freeing experience of having all that shit gone because there's no underlying worry of having to protect it or know it's there and you don't touch it. it it just collects dust yeah it was actually a real blessing in disguise for me i don't think a lot of people i don't think realize that they it's they have this fear of loss yes yes and they don't realize until it's gone until when it's, it's gone. gone that it's it's almost a relief yeah it is um, it and really i'm not wishing that on anyone no. myself and you included I'm no just but saying. don't yeah, be cautious of what you're spending your money on. I mean, if it's materialistic stuff and you don't need it, don't get it. I like to walk so, around the store and hold it for a little bit and then realize, I don't really fucking need this, and I put it back. Right. So we were talking about them stealing data, and you had brought up you know, it being something that should be majorly punishable. Well, recently there was a data breach where at one point, there were reports going around saying that it was possible that every social security number in the United States had been stolen, which is insane. Uh, it's later come down to find out that it was a company called National Public Data that was breached and about 272 million social security numbers, well, names how many, and addresses were. How many people are in the, uh, isn't only 300 million or something in the country? There, I, I don't know what the. That's a fucking is. lot. I mean, that's it's a lot. It's a majority of every human being in this continent. If it's this is just U.S. Yeah, and and guess what? If you got through that without your info getting stolen, it just came out today that AT and T had a major security breach where social security numbers were stolen. So, they started thinking about that in. If people are stealing your social security number, using it for nefarious reasons to, you know, open accounts and um, credit cards and and things of that nature, like what happens when everybody's social security number is stolen? Like, there, what happens in that interim? Obviously, they're going to go to some sort of other form of identification, I would imagine, um, because you just can't have some blockchain shit. twelve people with the same social security number, right? So what happens then? It, it's, it was this, this weird, I don't know, this weird unknown. People have been trying to steal and manipulate since the beginning of time. The means in which they do it is obviously always evolving with whatever the new shiny thing is. For them to be stealing our social securities now, it almost seems like that is antiquated we should be evolving into something else by now right it well you're right feels like we should be ready for that and it's funny that when you were talking about that i just thought of something do you remember like when we first got our driver's license or my yeah. id from my we from could college, fake it no problem I, I still have my old college id <laughs> my social security numbers on it oh no shit yeah that's right yeah so it it 
it almost didn't have as much importance back then as it does now. Yeah. And I guess maybe because the digital world and it's much easier for people to. Another fucked up thing about that is if people start running it for credit, like, like if you go just check your credit, I believe, and depending on what platform it is, if you were just to go pull your credit, yeah, I feel like you get ding for just checking it, which I don't but understand why. You're allowed to do it once a year. Okay, once a year, but now. You get these major companies that you do business with, you know they were breached, and let's say you're like, I just want to go check, not because I'm buying anything, I just want to make sure no one else is buying anything, and I'm punished for doing that on my credit. Well, that's fucked up. Yeah, yes and no, yes and no, because you can sign up for a credit monitoring service, at, especially after something oh, like this at a happens. Cost. At, a it, cost. at a cost, absolutely. So I got to pay a cost to protect my own Social Security. Yeah, well, it, basically... This is what's happening. Somebody's stealing from you. So you you are paying a cost. You're just paying the lesser cost. So instead of someone opening a thirty thousand dollar credit line in your name and spending it all, you might spend, you know, twenty dollars a month. Yeah, but think of the ramifications of you checking let's say somebody watches this and they're hyper compulsive and, and say, I gotta check every month now if somebody's using it. So now they ding it twelve times a year. So they go from a seven eighty credit down to a 650, which means now they go buy a car or house, their interest rate goes up. So like they're paying, and that interest rate's for 30 years. So think about the ramifications of you just checking to make sure no one's stealing it and it affect your credit. That That is- That's a great, not right. That is a great point. Now, if you know enough about it, you can actually put a freeze on your credit. So what that is is, Nobody can look into your credit unless until you quote unquote thaw it. So you you open it back up so that you know you like if you're going to buy a car, right? They're going to check your credit. Well, if you lock it, whoever has your social security number, they can apply for credit or whatever. But then nobody can check it. So naturally, they're not going to get that hmm. that line of credit they're looking for. Okay. Um, so that is. A safeguard that that you can do and i believe that's free of charge um i don't like it it's just it's it's a fucking hassle it needs to change it needs to be updated yeah yeah 100 percent. so speaking of money <laughs> i like money money we love money one of the larger corporations in america starbucks oh boy uh, based in seattle not a fan yeah yeah me neither and i um, like coffee even though I haven't had any coffee in about a month. I have a problem when I go to bring my daughter to school in the morning and she's like, Dad, can you take me to Starbucks? Starbies. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it's $13 for a freaking drink and have you, a little cake pop. And I'm like, <laughs> the fuck? Have you ever waited in a drive-thru? I made the mistake one time to go through a drive-thru line at a Starbucks because I was used to donkeys and you're yeah. 20 people are out of there in a minute. Somebody places an order, and you hear a lot of the Starbucks fan people, they place their order. There's 20 things that go on with this, you know, extra foam, whip, whip, nay, nay, sprinkle, sprinkle. Never go in a drive through Starbucks line. And they want you to tip them, too, by the way. No. That's another place. No, no. I don't do that there. I made a hard no there. I don't go there anyway. Yeah. Well, anyhow, I, I can see why they have to charge you so much. They just hired a new CEO. Uh, his name's Brian Nickel, and that part of familiar. yeah, you're thinking of the uh, the old radio guy, oh, local Brian radio Nichols? guy, yeah. <laughs> but uh, this this Brian Nickel is based in Newport Beach, California, and as part of his negotiation, he is allowed to use the company jet to commute to Seattle for his job. So it's a thousand miles from Newport Beach to Seattle. He uses a company jet to commute there, and he has to be in his office in Seattle at least three days a week. Now, this is a company that is full of, I call them climate Nazis, <laughs> you know, worried about the planet and reducing their carbon footprint and all this crap. But they hire a CEO who's going to travel a minimum of 6,000 miles a week on a jet. And, and, and it, 
I don't want to hear that it's because he's got so much stardom he can't go on a private plane. Nobody would fucking know who this guy was if he walked into a room. A hundred percent. But he's doing it to buy time, which I understand. But the company's platform has made it very obvious that they demagogue on top of being climate conscious and aware of our carbon footprint. All Not the while they're offering their new CEO a thousand miles per week. No, no, no. It's a thousand miles per trip. Oh, per trip. So and he's going miles three days there, a week. A thousand miles back, three days a week. So it's a minimum six thousand si miles. Six thousand miles. That's putting off a big footprint. This and it this seems is, kind of a waste. This is all coming from a company that and and again, I want to preface this by saying I don't believe in the whole yeah. you know yeah. climate of course bullshit, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in 2020, Starbucks made a pledge that they were going to reduce its carbon emissions in direct operations and their supply chain by nearly half. What happened in March of this year, they made the statement that they have actually increased <laughs> their emissions by 8% since 2010. And... This is clearly a reason why. So it begs the question, if you believe one thing, why don't you practice what you preach? Oh, yeah. I, just in, either my, naive, in my eyes, it just shows it's a sham. It, it, now, of course, it's very easy to go on this side. So, And I like to because I don't like this company. That said, let's play the other side of the fence real quick. Mm -hmm. It just goes to show how powerful a very good customer experience can be for all those people that would stick up and buy the Starbucks and buy all the political hand wringing and everything that they've done in the news to garner attention. I don't blame them. I don't blame them for that. I don't, we don't do it typically other than what we're doing it right now, but <laughs> yeah. we're just highlighting hard hat highlights. Don't forget to like, and subscribe. We're highlighting the hypocrisy that is happening here. And um, yeah, that that's unbelievable that they would make that pledge. And I gotta imagine the six thousand miles a week on that private jet is a huge portion of that. Of course. You know, I know they have their big factories and whatever to produce stuff, but it just seems to me like that would be a mess. Of, so it's one of those. Well, I'm very important, so I need to do that, and you know, you don't need to do that. I I saw something another statistic related to this where the the weekly trips on this plane over the course of a month would would put out like two tons of some sort of carbon shit or whatever whatever emissions right and the average european puts out eight tons in a year so this is in a month they were putting out two tons so Figure that's 24 tons in a year, so you're three times the average. I'm lost on it. Yeah. I think it's... Well, anyhow. Bag of goods. Speaking of... Put the fries in the bag. Speaking of attention <laughs> whores. Yeah. Oh, the media. The yes. media lately is... I know... I, I say lately. I know it's been like this for a long time, but as I'm looking through and finding these stories for, for these segments... I see it more and more. And I, I saw one today that just really, it just really got me. I understand the, the clickbait. I understand why you would want the clickbait. You know, it drives, it drives people to the side. I would love for it to produce some clickbait. Let's do it. It's dude. It's just so bad. I saw an article earlier. Um, I'm sure you've probably seen a little bit of the, Theo Vaughn, the comedian, I like him. had had a had a uh, oh he had the Trumpster on interview with yeah. with President Trump and there was a there was a portion of it. Well, let me let me get to the headline here. The headline, and I quote from the Huffington Post, which you should consider the source. Trump interview goes off the rails during cocaine fused tangent. I actually saw that now. If you didn't know anything about this this podcast he had or anything like that, and you're reading that, you're going, "It's misleading." What the fuck is is Trump like running in the bathroom, blowing lines? Yeah, doing like, a little bump. You know, it's 
the average person who's not going to read that, it's how stories get started. And right? if they're fans of Huffington Post, that's what I was getting at the Starbucks. If you're a fan of Starbucks and what they play, you'll accept it. You'll allow it because you're such a fanboy. Well, here's the that's thing. That's misleading. It is. In the article... The article wasn't terribly written because I, I did take the time to read it. It wasn't terribly written in terms of, you know, falsehoods and, and things like that. But it's the headline yeah. because the headline is what catches everyone's eye. That's why it's a headline. So people that just casually scroll, they're like, oh, my God, I saw this article where, you know, Trump was doing coke talking to Theo Vaughn. Of course that's going to happen. You know the story. You tell this to me. I tell someone the third or fourth person. He was him and Theo Vaughn were doing cocaine. Yeah. So now, shame on you, Huffington Compost. It, it turns out the <laughs> the true story. The true story was that President Trump was talking about losing his brother Fred to alcoholism yep. and addiction. Uh, Theo Vaughn is also a former addict. Yeah. And so when they were talking about that, Theo mentioned he used to do cocaine. Yeah. And so the the conversation kind of spiraled from there because an inquisitive president trump was asking about his his uh addiction experience yeah. with his addiction but to put a headline like that that, that just really twists things in it this is just on one person now think about all the misleading headlines out there and the damage they can they cause to businesses uh People's personal lives, and, and there's people who have unfortunately ended it all because of things like this. And, and you know, it's just—it's almost like getting picked on in school, right? It—it's. I think it's even more than that because when you're getting picked on in the moment, I'm sure it feels the worst. But it's relegated to just those people. When you do stuff like this, not only can everybody see it, but it's out there forever. Right. And so, yeah, that's damaging. I'd it's, be pissed too. And out of all people, he's gotten probably more than anybody of the bad press and misleading stuff over the last, you know, seven, eight years. He's been crushed. Yeah, it's but true. Kudos to him for still standing strong. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> yeah, there's just, it, it's it's something I had to put out there because it just drives me nuts seeing this yeah. shit every day. It's, um, it is missing. We like to have a lot of fun with playing words, but it's usually mostly in satire. We are not, by no means are we a, I don't want to say media, we are not a news organization. No. We are an opinion-based content creators um, that are trying to get more eyeballs to bring attention to what the goods and services that we have to offer. And if you enjoy what you like watching here, you should definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel called Glassguy, G-L-A-Z-Z-G-U-I. Subscribe, comment, share. Send us a DM if you're interested in coming in-house and joining us for one of these weekly wrap-ups. We'd love to have you here. We've got a beautiful studio. Or if you're a builder or architect or designer, you want to do a lunch and learn and maybe shoot a podcast here in our showroom, reach out to Jay and I. You know, we'd always be happy to help. Jay, yeah, you got we, any closing statements? We would welcome any clickbait you want to put out there to bring them towards our page, so long as it's true. Hopefully our following gets large enough one day where people are concerned about our headlines that we put out every day. But until then, we'll see you next time on Hard Hat Highlights. Thanks a lot.